Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, public notification of this meeting has been published, posted, and distributed in compliance with the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act. I need a motion to approve the agenda or amend it. So move, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. The second. Second. Uh, without objection. Thank you, sir. Without objection, we'll approve the, the agenda for today. Are there any objections? Online. Any folks online? Check. Okay. Uh, that brings us to citizens' comments. I know we have at least one citizen Minutes. who's going to address us. We may have others. Uh, Mayor, you want to step up? You're up. All right. Yep. We still have to approve the minutes. What's that? The minutes. Oh. Stay right there, Mayor. This won't take a second. I need a motion to approve the minutes from uh, November 1st, 2021. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, without objection, we'll approve the minutes from November 1st, 2021. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the minutes from November 1st, 2021 are approved. Mayor, thank you for waiting. You're up. Thank you very much, Lisa Salka, Town of Bluffton, and happy holidays, Merry Christmas. The weather's fabulous. I hope we're all outside enjoying it. I'm actually here today to speak on item number eight, and it's more of an update, really more for Eric Greenway as well. I met with the Community Foundation of the Low Country today over um, just projects they're willing to do in the four county region, Hampton. Colleton, Jasper, and Buford, and he loved your presentation, Eric, on the Affordable Housing Trust, and their board has made affordable housing and workforce housing one of their top priorities. So we were explaining what we were doing as municipalities in the county, and they were fine with me relaying financially. They would be very interested in playing a part of it. So um, I know he's met with the new chair of that and we were excited about that and our town will be looking forward to the you and we will work to get the other municipalities on board so we're behind you on that and while i'm up here item 10 and 11 thank you thank you jared for bringing this forward um we have some resident non-town residents in our our area that are excited about this because it could give them means to go to the to fema and other resources for funding to get their houses raised i have a personal stake in it i have family and i have friends that live in the area that are really close to getting that grant so that item 11 and 10 and 11 would be much needed so thank you thank you Bring, any other uh, public comments sarah anybody else yes, sir. going once going twice okay. uh next item seven is a discussion of the 20 proposed 2022 penny sales tax <coughs> referendum who will speak to that yeah our never-ending need for roads bridges and other infrastructure That'll be me, uh, Chairman Somerville. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Don't always get to talk in front of the executive committee, so uh, a lot of familiar faces I see on the other committees. Um, but thanks for letting me talk about future sales tax referendum. Um, so obviously we have our current sales tax referendum, our 2018, uh, 120 million, and we have three projects which we're working through those. Um, we're talking about a future sales tax in potentially 22. Um, there's also been talk about maybe pushing that off to later. Um, however, what I've learned from working with Councilman Rodman over the last year is always very handy to have a handout. Uh, so I have a handout with me today. Uh, rest assured, it is not a spreadsheet. Um, but I will hand it out. Before I hand it out to each of you, though, I have a few specific instructions on it, and I ask you not to open it till the end of, of me talking, and I'll, I'll let you know when. For those of you online, I'll, I'll put something to, uh, to my Gronkowski over here. She's my duo uh, to get her to load up the screen for for what I'm going to share you. And then lastly, I tried this exercise with my two-year-old this morning, and it failed miserably not looking inside. So I know you guys will do much better. <laughs> this 
may be the first time I question your judgment about passing this. <laughs> don't look, don't look. <laughs> Thanks, Sheriff. Yes, As I was talking, um, I know there's been some discussion lately as far as whether sales tax in 2022 is appropriate or whether we should wait until later. Um, we don't have all the projects done in our current sales tax, um, but I got thinking to myself as I was coming to talk to you guys, what would be for appropriate for me to talk? I could talk about all the facts, all the figures. Um, I figured Councilman Rodman would have a spreadsheet later, so I figured I wouldn't cover that. Um, but rather than talk traditionally about things you probably already know, I thought if you guys would bear with me a little while, I'd like to tell you the story. And I will promise I'll bring it all back to a point. Um, but let me tell you a little story. Uh, so three years ago, my family and I, we went on a family vacation to the best place on earth. Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World. <laughs> so uh, we visited uh, Orlando. And in doing that, all along the way, the entire state of Florida, if you hadn't been in the last three years, was under construction, or so it seemed. Every road from Jacksonville to Orlando was tore up, and they were building bridges and anything road infrastructure, toll roads, everything you could think of in that time frame. Well, this four, past four or three years, this past Thanksgiving, just recently, my family and I went back to Orlando. We didn't go to Disney World. We went to Universal Studios, and we had a blast. And they were about 90% done with all that infrastructure, and it was phenomenal. To the point where, and I didn't realize how nerdy of a dad I was and how much of a geek on roads I was until my, my oldest daughter sitting in the back said, Hey, Dad, these roads are really smooth, and they're great. And I'm like, okay, I'll take that one. But yes, you're right. They are great roads. But the, the takeaway from that is that I have no idea how much those road projects cost, but they were in the millions, probably even billions of road projects. They were very expensive. The takeaway, though, is someone put those roads into action many, many, many years ago to what is now... Um, on the way back on, on Thanksgiving weekend, we didn't sit in traffic at all until we got halfway through Georgia and then a standstill in South Carolina. So while we're in Orlando, every road down there is not three lanes, it's three plus or four or five lanes. I'm not saying that we need to go that route, but every road was brand new black asphalt. They had on-street biking lanes on every road on both sides of the road they had a five foot grass strip they had an eight foot multi-use path on both sides of the road they had bus stops everywhere they had green energy buses riding those buds it was the mecca of transportation like when you think of gold standard this is the gold standard of what we choose to be like what should we ascribe to be is orlando now i recognize they have probably a billion plus visitors a year uh, that'll do it with Walt Disney World, and Sarah probably goes five times a year, so you can count her a couple times. But we do have millions of visitors that come uh, to our county and our area and visit the, the great things that we have here in Beaufort County. And I recognize that this didn't happen in Orlando overnight, that their road impact or their roads don't look the way they do today because it, somebody snapped their fingers. It actually started well over 50 years ago by one charismatic leader who you can name as Mr. Walt Disney and a vision. And that vision grew from, from, a, from a, a theme park, amusement park, to a community, to a city, to a county, to a region. But it started with a vision. So rather than us get here and talk about sales tax, I would encourage us to talk about a vision. And what I'm talking about is a 30-year vision of what our roads could look like. And sales tax is a reoccurring sales tax, whether it be four years that we have now, or eight, 10, 25, whatever that is, a reoccurring sales tax is just a tool to accomplish that vision. So imagine, if you would with me, what $4 million extra would do to resurfacing our roads with DOT. Sounds like a lot of money. We have a lot of roads and a lot of potholes. I don't know how far that would go. But when you take that $4 million and you stack it with their federal grant at an 80-20 split, that $4 million instantly becomes $20 million. Now, 
imagine that $20 million over 30 years. They already spend $20 million, but now you got an additional $20 million. Our roads in Beaufort County will look fantastic and would look the same as they do in Orlando today in 30 years. Now, imagine what our roads would look like, our dirt roads would look like. We talked about this already, uh, but right now we spend about $2 million a year on our dirt roads. If inside our sales tax and our 30-year vision, we spend an extra $4 million a year on paving dirt roads, in a matter of 10 or 15 years, we wouldn't have one single dirt road in Beaufort County. That's a pretty amazing fact. And then imagine that we're prepared enough that we're ready to catch some of these infrastructure bill dollars that we keep hearing, or another round of SIB funding that we've already captured. But in order to do that, we've got to be rich, ready to pounce. We've got to be leaning forward in an athletic position. If you think about sports, and sorry I always go back to sports, but um, I watched a lot of ESPN. So every athlete starts in an athletic position. Whether you're sitting there as a linebacker, or a shortstop, or a sprinter, or a skier, or whatever, if you're in an athletic position, your, your muscles are engaged and you're ready to pounce. You're also sitting on the balls of your feet, not your toes, not leaning too far forward, and you're definitely not sitting on your heels. There's never been one person that's won a gold medal by standing on their heels during an event. <laughs> so, we've already done this. We've already set this example. We know what this feels like. Some people maybe not have been on council at the time. I wasn't with the county at the time, but we've done this in 278. In 2017, we had a vision. We brought that vision to DOT and said, hey, we want to do a road improvement on 278. And they said, that sounds great. We need $6 million to do some initial studies, and we'll give you a year. We've got to fix one bridge on 278, but if you don't come together with a bigger project by then, we're going to just go fix our own project. So we said, okay. We figured out a way with LATS to get $6 million. Then, by the end of 2018, we put it on a referendum. And we didn't, said, we didn't know how big the project was going to be. We just said $80 million. That ought to give us a good start on a bridge. So we said $80 million. And so we were successful in getting that $80 million. We didn't know what the, the end state looked like, but we knew that working and keeping this going, that we were going to be successful. So then we get DOT to say, yes, we'll put our $40 million in. And then we took that $120 million and said, hey, Mr. Sip, we've got $120 million. We'd like to encourage to get your $120 million for a $240 million road project. And they said, you know what? That's the best application in the entire state. Does somebody come to me at 50% and say, I can leverage my money 50%? Yes, I'll sign up. Now, we could have been successful at 20% or 30%. I don't know what we would have been. But the fact that we had 50% in there ready to do it, that, that's how we got the full bridge funded. Now, SIB didn't come to us. DOT didn't come to us. We came to everybody with a vision. And we came to them with money. So we, we have all this infrastructure built, but it's not going to fall in our laps. The way it falls in our laps is we got first cast a vision, then start a plan, then put some our own capital up, and then go shell, uh, fill out an application. So we've done it before. But remember, this path is a journey. And the vision is what lights the path. So your sheet. So um, <laughs> if you start pulling this up, and you can unfold it. So now, as Sarah pulls this up, you can see in front of you this handout from our once poet laureate of our nation, Mr. Robert Frost. I encourage each of you to read this along with me as I read it aloud, the poem, The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as far as the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to lay, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Hmm. So council, whether we talk about a sales tax today or tomorrow, 
I hope that you guys uh, choose that road that's less traveled, the one to move forward on and push until, don't push until later. Um, I know that you guys will make the right answer eventually, and whatever that answer is, we'll still get down the journey and the path together. But I just offer that as something to hold on to as we think about whether now is the right time or should we wait till later. Uh, and with that, that's all I have to say. Very not traditional, probably what you wanted me to say here, but that's what came to mind. And I'll gladly take any questions. I'll, I'll make a comment if that's okay. Um, I think that's a great way to explain what it is that, that we need to do. Um, as I've reflected on this, I think um, if I went back in time, I, I traditionally looked at do one every four years. Um, but I've evolved uh, in due part to uh, our conversations about the, the longer vision that we need. Uh, you've highlighted several of the things that are extremely important in terms of leveraging our, our money. Uh, another one that you've brought up in the past is that interest rates are very low. Construction costs are rising a lot faster. So actually this is one of those times where we're better off to invest sooner um, and pay it back over the long time at, uh, at low interest rates. Um, so, where I come out on this is that I think it would be short-sighted to just look at doing a four-year. In fact, I think the four-year would be more challenging, and I very much buy into the, the longer term. I know you, Eric has um, some experience in that where he's been. I know Kurt has some experience to where they've been, um, and you've captured that there are other things that we could fold into that. So I'm very much in favor of us doing it next year, but making it a long-term, not a short-term one. And I think it actually would, would sell better with the, the public than trying to do a, a short-term one. And I think we have, I think it's easier, frankly, to package in the time that we have to do it. Paul. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. So, Brian, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I think my feelings on this matter has have been made clear in previous meetings. But in case anybody is just tuning in now and just being engaged in this, let me let me summarize them. There is no way that I could support a referendum in 2022 when every single project that we've already received all the money for has not been done every there's not a single project that's been completed out of the list of 20 sidewalks um 10 or 15 road projects on ladies island etc 10 altogether i think um and plus the bridge on 278 uh, there there's no way that that i would vote for this and there's no way i would support it um and so there you go thank you Thank you, Brian. Joe, you had your... Yeah, a, a comment. Um, Alice, Paul, and I just came back from the SCAC Legislative Conference, and one of the presentations in there was from the SCDOT. Um, one of the things they had to say, we are now the fourth largest state highway system in the nation, and we're serving the 10th fastest growing population in the nation. They understand how bad our roads are in South Carolina, the number of accidents there are. Uh, we, we use terms, malfunction junction. So there has to be a vision. And that's what piques my interest now, moving forward. We have to come up with that vision that you said about long term, how do we fix every one of these roads? If we had all the money, this is the vision we would have. So I applaud you for doing that. I think that's the approach we need to take. Whether we can do it next year, 2022, there's the education part. We have to get everybody on board with our vision. Yes, the state is going to do some things in our area, 
they're going to start in 2023 or 2024, but we have to plan for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Who else? Your? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I agree with Joe, and um, I like um, your approach. Um, everybody keep referring to you as an engineer. I don't <laughs> see engineering uh, in you because. Not too many engineers I can sit down and talk to uh, um, you to be a, a different mode. So um, I, I like your style. I like your approach. Um, I think Beaver County, if we put forth a vision, a purpose, a plan, I think the voters will support it. But it has to be there. And the reason why we're doing what we're doing, um, I will fall back on um, something that we have done over and over and over again, which is the um, the uh, conservation um, project, uh, where the voters in Beaufort County has voted overwhelmingly for it. They support it. Uh, I think if we put together a vision, a purpose, uh, with a plan, this is what we this is where we're heading, and these are the tools like you have outlined here. Um, that we're going to need to make this happen. I think the voters in Beaufort County will support it. Uh, so I applaud you. I also applaud you because you used one of my favorite authors. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any hands? Oh, yeah. Uh, who's that? Logan. 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 Sorry. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jared, as always, it's eventful listening to you speak. So I appreciate that. Um, my approach on this is going to be a little bit different. I I'm all for the vision. I'm all for making a plan. That's why um, I, I came out against the local option sales tax when we talked about it because there was no plan. There was no objects that we were trying to accomplish. There was no end date. Uh, the one thing I will say that scares me, it seems like I might disagree with a lot of you guys on is I, I, I wouldn't support anything over four years. Um, I think we need to create a set plan, focus on them, and get those goals accomplished. Especially with, just like Brian said a few minutes ago, we haven't accomplished all the goals on our last one. I would like to do this in 2022. I have said that this summer. Um, I had told the people we were coming back to them this um, in 2022 or 2023 for this. We all knew it was coming. We all knew it was on our minds. Um, I, I think we need to be upfront about that. I think if we want to get this accomplished and get this done, um, I'm all for thinking big, but a 10-year project for billions of dollars, um, that doesn't seem like an easy thing to bite off. And the other thing that worries me too is things change. Um, we're, we're dealing with issues right now with things that were approved in 2006 that now Beaufort County doesn't want anymore. And we just had a huge meeting about that. You, you were with me on that meeting, Jared. Um, so I, I do think maybe we should look at, you know, the important projects and start focusing on those and funding those. Um, and, you know, focus on the heartbeat of Beaufort County and get those things accomplished first. But I will support this getting done in 2022 on the ballot. Um, but four, in four or five years, is going to be my max on that. Anything against that, um, I'm all for the big vision. But Beaufort County does change a lot in those years. Thank you. Thank you, Logan. See anybody else? I'll just make a comment. I think uh, I think Brian has a good point. That there, there needs to be a... There needs to be a clear vision of what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and when we're going to do it. And that vision has to include what's already on the table. I think it has to be a continuum of what we've already funded through petty sales tax and other sources, how that's going, when is it, when's the completion date, and when we're going to begin on these new projects and what that continuum looks like. So I think that's up to us, and uh, I, don't, I don't question that we can do that. But right now, I think there are some questions. What about all these projects that are still sitting out there undone? But that's going to change. Absolutely. Thank you. And I think Eric probably has some timeline. Hey, uh, I just want to address the comment about the existing projects. Um, uh, so I just want to make it clear for the record that the existing projects have not been completed or started, uh, not because staff hasn't been trying to do them, but whenever we get into a situation where like we are on 278, like we are on Sea Island Parkway, like we are on a lot of the other pathways where we have to keep going back to communities to address community concerns uh, unnecessarily and sometimes uh, over and over again, that results in delays. 
I don't have to tell you all the political environment that we've been in on Highway 278, trying to move that project along. Uh, but I just want to make it clear, make sure council understands that staff is doing everything we can, Jared's doing everything we can, administration is doing everything we can to move these projects forward. And many times we get told to hold up uh, so we can do another study or look at something else or hold another meeting and get some additional comments on it. So uh, we just need to trust the experts. Uh, trust DOT on 278, trust Jared, trust everyone to do the right thing there and to design a project that's appropriate, looks good, and it's going to work as efficiently as we possibly can. So we're, we'll bring back a plan to you all as far as advancing the 22 sales tax project, which will include uh, the appointment of a citizens committee to ha help actually build the project list uh, that you all as individual council members will have an opportunity to appoint uh, citizens to. I would ask that when we do that and you appoint those folks, that you make sure that those folks that you appoint are people that understand transportation, uh, that understands the needs of the county as far as transportation infrastructure is concerned, and uh, let's get this going. I think Jared has the ability, has the vision, and has the knowledge of what projects need to be, and we'll move it ahead. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead York. Yeah, I, I just want to echo um, what um, Mr. Greenway just said, and in, in all um, respect for the staff, um, they have been working on my projects uh, in my community. Um, my community basically, uh, for the first time, has seen some of these issues and has brought it to uh, our attention. Um, just want to be involved, and I think uh, moving forward. Um, as we get beyond the um, pandemic, uh, we can have more and more meaningful meetings, but um, um, a lot of it has been really people uh, basically in, in stored up and now they're coming out and they're voicing their concern for the first time. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing staff doing their work. Um, it's just taking some time getting the end results, but they're moving and um, just want to say thank you and I appreciate what y'all doing. Thank you. Yes, you yeah, as, as a practical matter, uh, we would probably be sometime in the spring when we would be making our final vote on whether to go forward or not go forward. And in order to take something to the public that's that's meaningful, there's going to be an awful lot of work, a lot of discussion that's going to precede the final vote that we take on taking it forward. Uh, my sense is that uh, at least the majority um, would say that we probably should be moving forward. And I think as part of that is you're planning it, uh, certainly whether it starts in 22 or 24 or whether it's four years or eight years or something longer, that will come out in the, in the wash. So um, I think it does make sense for us to proceed and make this a priority. Mr. Chairman. Um, I applaud your vision on getting all the dirt roads paved. Uh, this is what I really like about it. I, I grew up on a dirt road, <laughs> never got paved <laughs> in, in another state. Um, but um, it, everyone, if we can do this and get every, all the roads paved instead of doing one a year or, or two a year, and also pathways, I know that's part of your vision, and I think that's part of the citizens group. Uh, there wasn't enough money to do the pathways that we promised and uh, this would ha help us and that would get actually more cars off the road hopefully and um, more use of public transportation uh, needs so i'm not all about building more roads because if you build them they come but um, they're coming anyway they're here so they're here so we need to be able to handle it and i appreciate your vision thanks thank you anybody else just one final comment. Yes, <clears throat> um, timelines, deadlines need to be met. Um, it is my suggestion, Mr. Chairman, that we refer this to the Public Facilities Committee, committee to direct, well, we, we should direct administration now. You've made the presentation. You're talking about the vision. We now have to put that vision on paper. We need to bring it before Public Facilities ASAP, uh, more than likely, no later than January. We need to establish all of the ancillary committees that will be necessary to have it locked down by early spring, 
be it February or March at the latest, so that we can begin to educate the public properly. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. One, one final comment, Paul. This is Brian. Uh, Brian, I'm sorry. Brian, Brian. Oh, Brian. Okay, I'm sorry, Brian. <clears throat> Hey, um, one final comment, and this is not in response to anything anybody else has said, but a question, I think, for Jared, because I don't have the benefit of the list that he's looking at. I'm wondering, though, it seems it seems in my mind that the biggest transportation issues we have are those areas where we seem to be butting up against Jasper County um and somewhere along the border or, or um i guess even savannah but that's <clears throat> essentially through jasper county i'm wondering what kind of cooperative arrangements we have to share costs with in other words jasper county citizens um coming to beaufort to work or beaufort county citizens going to jasper to work do we have some some way to, to ask for assistance from jasper hardyville sure so um, let me tell you the, the, what I envision as the three big projects in um, sales tax and for the county at large beyond what we're working on with 278 right now. Um, one is, and, and all three of them have that component that you talked about, Councilman Fluell, and it's some joint, com, some joint uh, use. So one is SC 170, which is uh, Jasper County, Beaufort County, and Town of Hardyville, and DOT are, is in all of these. Uh, so those three. The second one is Rebo Road, all the way from Boundary Street to the Paris Island Bridge, which again is Beaufort County, City of Beaufort, and Town of Port Royal and DOT. And third, it's not as pressing as far as uh, current transportation, but it's future and beyond, is SC 46 widening from SC 170 roundabout to the Jasper County line. And my goal would be that it goes beyond that, that we continue to extend that. We are currently in the process of widening S, uh, uh, US 17. Um, and so basically, if we widened all the way from US 17 to SC 170, there would be four lanes of open and available traffic from Savannah to Beaufort County and to the Jasper Port eventually. Um, so doing our part and then coordinating with Jasper County, all three of those have a, a very lucrative funding parameters and partners either through the state or federal delegation um, uh, representative Clyburn is in Jasper County as we're all aware and then uh, again the CIB would be another partner and then other representatives as well so all those are the three big projects outside of 278 Jared you, when you say 17 in Jasper uh, County in, that's in all in Jasper County though right right yeah, our portion would be 46 from SC 170 to Jasper County line. The remainder is in Jasper County, which is the larger portion. But again, Jasper County doesn't have the funds that we do. They do have some funds. They're looking at going at another sales tax in the coming years. I don't think 22, but possibly later. Um, but then Senator or Representative Clyburn uh, represents a larger portion of Jasper County. And I think we have a better opportunity on that one due to the port at the state level and then with uh, Representative Clyburn to really dress that project up and make it appealing. Okay. That's it. Anybody else? Yeah, All right. Paul, Thank you. Paul, Jared. If, yes, sir. if, if I might, uh, Jared, great presentation, great uh, vision. Um, uh, I would say to all of us as leaders of uh, the citizens of Beaufort County, um, without a vision, uh, our people perish. And without a vision, we, the county, we will find ourselves behind the eight ball trying to deal with the infrastructure needed to uh, keep up with the growth. So I, I would support us going ahead and developing uh, the plan to uh, to meet the, the vision that Jared has laid out. But I, I, I am one who think that we need to show the public that um, we have uh, put forth some of the projects that, um, that they, they have uh, supported before we ask them to support another round of projects. So um, let's put the plan together and rather than try and rush to get it in for 2022, 
I'd be in support of us waiting until 2024. I, I think we stand a much better chance. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for a motion to refer this to the Public Facilities Committee for the purpose of putting meat on the bone, if you will, coming up with a specific plan to move forward. I'm not exactly sure what that plan would look like, but uh, Logan made certainly include a committee to uh, to begin looking at the different projects that we might consider to be part of it. So, do Logan I have a motion? Made, Logan made the motion. Okay. Thank you, Logan. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. All right. Um, do we need to do a roll call on this? Are there any objections to this, to moving it to uh, public facilities? Hearing none. Uh, no, we'll no, go ahead and move it to public facilities. That's absolutely fine, sir, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. We need some depth. We need some meat on these bones anyway. I don't feel comfortable voting no on something that's kind of empty right now. Gotcha. Okay, without objection, we'll move this forward to the uh, Public facilities, meeting, public facilities committee at the time that Mr. Rodman wants to take it up, whatever that may be. Sooner rather than later. Uh, moving on to number eight, um, everybody remembers the American Rescue Plan uh, Act. We've got so many of these federal programs hanging out there, we get confused of which one we're talking about. We've got the ARPA, which is the one we're going to talk about now, and we've got the infrastructure plan, which has already passed. Congress and been signed by the president, and then we have Build Back Better America, which may or may not go anywhere. So right now we're talking about one that's a little, I don't know, a couple of years old, how old, old it is. ARPA, we got a lot of money, and now we got to figure out what to do with it. And our staff's going to give us some idea what those options might look like. Yes, indeed. So, um, yeah, so this one was established in the law in March 11th, 2020. Um, 2020? 2021. I'm getting my years mixed up, too. 2021. It seems like we've been talking about it for years. <laughs> Um, so uh, we talked about this at, at council retreat and we gave you guys a taste of, of where we were headed. We've since then, uh, over the past months, Heather and I and staff have been coordinating with all of our partners uh, that we proposed and the, and the proposed projects and develop those further for your consideration. And our goal today is to provide you more details to those projects and, and have discussion and uh, by the end of that discussion, hopefully provide this list to move it forward to council um, for approval later in the month so that we can start working on this list. This is a, a list, it's a plan, uh, just like a uh, budget is a plan. Uh, it, if things change and, and there's opportunity that confront us, i.e. funding from the state level that they make available, we may come back to you guys and revise the plan. But this, with the knowledge that we have in front of us today, is where we are basing these plans and proposals in front of you. And again, um, we've talked about this with our partners, very great conversations over this last month. In your docket is the uh, spreadsheet of all the projects. And with that, I'll introduce Ms. Rath to come back and talk to us through each of these projects. Thank you so much, Jared and Council. It's great to be in front of you again. I'm really excited about the work that we've been able to do um, around ARPA over the last, um, well, I guess about six months now. But really, we've taken a deep dive by utilizing your recommendations from when we came and, and spoke to you during a budget process. So again, what is ARPA? So ARPA is H.R. 1319. It was signed into law March 11th of this year, and Beaufort County is receiving $37.3 million. Remember, this entire bill, and I talked about this um, in my last presentation, is $1.9 trillion. So while we're receiving the $37 million, we don't need to be taking our eye off of that $1.9 trillion because that is available to us as well in, in other forms and fashions. So what can ARPA be used for? So ARPA can support urgent COVID response. It can replace lost sector revenue. It can support immediate economic stabilizations for households and businesses. It can address systematic public health and economic challenges. And it cannot be used to directly or indirectly offset um, reduction in tax revenue. It cannot be used 
to make a deposit to a pension fund, no deposits to rainy day funds. Um, general infrastructure spending is not covered in eligible use, but we can cover that under the lost revenue sector. It is not to be used for legal settlements or judgments or for funding debt service. So again, the Beaver County process, how we got here. So in April of 2021, we formed the task force. And we met with the task force. There was about 20 different agencies that were represented on our task force team. We met over a series of months. And in those months, we also put in for federal and state appropriations. Um, number, November 4th, I came to y'all and I made our draft recommendations um, and I got some guidance from you. And again, I want to talk about this task force for a moment because it was a really inclusive task force and I really want to make sure that everybody understands that Eric Greenway, he really recognized the need to form this task force and set priorities for spending. Um, this is a once in a lifetime moment for Beaufort County and for our country and um, the stakeholders really brought a lot to the table and brought a lot of information to us. Next slide. So for the last month, from November to December, Jared and I worked with your feedback to formulate plans and that we received on, um, I'm sorry, to formulate plans from the council feedback received on November 4th. Um, December 6th, this is today, I would like to present to you the project plans and receive feedback from you. And then of course, we'll do a future date for a council vote. And again, just to reiterate, today I'm going to be reviewing each of the project plans, and then each plan will be met with memorandums of understanding, MOUs when necessary to ensure transparency and accountability. We have a lot of partner projects that I'm presenting to you today, so again, the MOUs are going to be very important to the process. And then again, clear communication with focus goals ensures credibility and confidence for y'all to move forward. Next slide. Thank you. Again, this is the task force members, kind of small font there, but you can see that we have a lot of different representation from different entities all across the county. Thank you, Sarah. So our why, how we measured projects. We looked at projects that had a high leverage financial opportunities with matching funds, not just from our partners, but from the federal level, the state level, school district, municipalities, nonprofits, and even the private sector. We looked at projects that serve a wide variety of residents. We looked at projects that create a return on an investment or a re revenue source, and then projects that will have a lasting impact. And one of the things when I was looking through your comprehensive plan and really digging into it, there were three things that kept, came up. Resiliency, equitably, equi equitable, and you need to place projects. So that's something that we looked at when we were doing our why as well. So how other municipalities are using their ARPA funding, they're using it for pandemic impact grants for nonprofits, they're using it for home repair or removal of structures, security and technology improvements, workforce housing, public recreation, and then of course sewer connection. Next slide. Okay, so this is the meat and potatoes, and I wanted to get into this right away. So what I'm doing, you should have a spreadsheet that was in your packet, and I'm going line by line down the spreadsheet. So every project that I'm bringing to you will match on the spreadsheet. The very first one that I wanted to talk about is under workforce, and we have five projects that we're pre presenting today under workforce. The first one is a teacher loan payoff program, and this is a $1 million investment. And the challenge is this, over 50% of teachers leave the workforce entirely after five years. This is a national statistic. This is not a statistic just for Beaufort County, it's national. And so this makes recruiting and retaining teachers in Beaufort County a very difficult task, considering the low entry pay scale and the high cost of housing here in the county. So our goal is to create a sustainable workforce of teachers in Beaufort County. And how we want to do that is by partnering with the Beaufort County School District to create a loan payoff program for teachers. We would be able to provide up to $30,000 in loan payoff for teachers working in Beaufort County over a six-year period. That gets them over that five-year hump. It would be $5,000 a year for six years paid in six-month increments. We would provide 100% loan payoff for teachers working in the county for a 10-year period. These teachers must be new hires to Beaufort County. That was something that we heard back from council on. So it would be a recruitment tool. 
the teachers are not required to live in Beaufort County, and they may teach at any district in in the they may teach at any school in the district and in any curriculum source. Um, the matching request has been made to the Beaufort County School District, and they're very interested in partnering with us. The program could be administrated or administered by Community Foundation of the Low Country or the Beaufort County School District. Again, that's something that you all can provide guidance on. And then sustainability um, after the $1 million is used could be found in local nonprofits um, who are encouraging teacher retention and recruitment um, or the school district. And again, we would have to determine success. Um, this also fits your economy chapter of the comprehensive plan, which strongly supports any program aimed at developing a skilled workforce. And so with that, um, Chair, Councilman Somerville, would you like me to stop after each of them and take comments, or would you like me to keep going? Does anybody have any comments on the uh, on the teacher payoff program? Uh, I have one, Mr. Chairman, if possible. Uh, Logan, you want to comment? Uh, yeah. Uh, one of my questions, I guess, would be, it says provide up to 30000 in loan payoff for teachers, and then you went on to say that if they worked for us for 10 years, that'd be 100% payoff. I'm um, just making sure we're on the same page. We are aware that there are some teachers that have over a hundred thousand dollars of debt because of the schools they chose to go to. Just want to make sure that's out there. So, like when we when we're talking about these numbers, there's a big difference between thirty thousand and an extra seventy thousand. Like I know I know kids and worked with teachers that went to Clemson because they chose to go to Clemson and have a hundred thousand dollars of debt. So there, there's a big difference. I just want to make sure that we're everyone on council is aware that. Someone that went to USCB that has forty thousand dollars of the loan, and someone that went to Clemson that has a hundred thousand dollars of the loan, is getting the same full loan payout. Just wanted to put that out there, make sure that I understood what you were saying was correctly, and everyone on council also understood that. Yeah, I think we'd have to. That's a good point, uh, Logan. We'd have to agree among ourselves that this is an open-ended commitment, as opposed to a simple million-dollar contribution to a specific fund. If it's an open-ended commitment, we need to understand that, because uh, what, what the numbers look like. Because are we just saying a million dollars? When a million dollars runs out, we're done. Okay. Right. And a partnership with the school district, and then the school district can, if they find success in this program, then they can go on and fund it on their own. Did you hear that? <clears throat> but, yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense because I, I I don't think we want to commit to open-ended. Yes, Chairman. And, and ARPA is very specific about saying do not create projects that have, you know, a long life cycle on them. Have a finite. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I had a question. Yes, sir. What, uh, well, sorry. It's okay. Uh, Heather, did, uh, is there a maximum payout here in your plan of $30,000 per, per teacher? So is... From these funds? From, from these funds, unless you wanted to go ahead and take the 100% loan payoff for teachers working in Beaufort County for a 10-year period. And that was to leverage teachers to stay for a longer period of time. Um, Councilman Cunningham is absolutely correct. You have teachers that have masters and doctorates, right? And with that comes um, loan payments. You're right, but it would be $5,000 a year for five, five years or 10 years. So it's $5,000 a year for six years paid in six months six month increments okay and then if you want to extend it it would still be five thousand a year for the for up to the 10 year that would that would be that would to be determined but i oh, wanted okay. to hit that 10 year mark okay because again dr rodriguez when we talked to him about this plan he said if we have teachers stay with us for 10 years they stay with us mm -hmm. they stay mr chairman so our liability with respect to our arpa money ends at a million dollars yes okay mr chairman uh, yeah i'm sorry i I'm not sure. You said the new hires. That comment came from county council. I, 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 I still don't. I don't. I don't think it should just be new hires. You know, retention is very important. But I, I guess you changed that to new hires since you got comments from um, county council before that said new hires. I mean, I, I can. We can. This plan is completely fluid. So yeah. whatever y'all would like to see. And, I, I, you know, I, I see some leave after two two years. You know, and I, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Logan ha or York have some comments too, because they're they're related to people in the teaching field too. Yeah, you know, only comment I'm gonna make is that um, this is um, me speaking. Um, I think 
this should be used as a tool mm -hmm. to encourage retention. Mm -hmm. And the tenure is there if, if it's 10 years uh, after you know, they're going to stay on, then the target should be 10 years now. Um, uh, in a, um, a undergraduate degree, um, as far as I'm concerned, is suffice. Uh, a master is a choice, uh, even though now they're encouraging a master. But if anybody wants to get a doctorate degree, that's on their own, as far as I'm concerned. But it's really one of using um, um, some tools to actually encourage them to stay because they do need um, sometime a little enticement uh, just to hang around. And if they can stay for 10 years, and, and I think the school district know exactly what it, they need. So I don't want to lean to you, but I am not in favor of paying off uh, a doctorate degree program. Mm -hmm. I'm just, Understood. Yeah. You're not in favor of paying off a doctoral program, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I right. Agree. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I understand this, uh, it's almost like we would be making a contribution to a school district program that they would administer, and I think we need to understand exactly what they're proposing to do. Um, I also think the retention probably is worth more than the uh, placing it on new hires as okay. we go forward. But it doesn't mean if they hired somebody, that person couldn't be eligible also. It's, it's not our, we're only talking 30 teachers out of 2,000 or whatever their professional staff is. So it's a, the, you know, they're going to get $70 million, so we need to understand how much skin they've got in the game. Right. I mean, if you do the quick math on this, $30,000, that takes care of 33 people. That's right. So uh, it's, it's really a drop in the bucket. So mm -hmm. I think Stu's notion that, that it's a contribution to somebody else's fund is absolutely has to be right, because otherwise we're, we're stepping into a, an open-ended situation that mm -hmm. nobody can predict what it looks like. So they're going to, I think, giving a million dollars to the school is a great idea okay. uh, out of out of these, these funds, but but that's it. And then, then the school district is going to have to figure out how that program is going to work and, and what what the long-term prognosis is for people who maybe somebody wants to get a Ph.D. or a master's degree between now and year 10. Is that going to be covered? I mean, that's something the school district is going to have to figure out, right. not us. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, one final, one final point, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm, um, I'm again with qualifications. I'm, I'm, um, I'm happy that this has made the cut as a potential uh, recipient of some of our ARPA money. But again, with qualifications, all of them except for one has been discussed. So I won't belabor the point. The point that I would like to make is that I'd like to see that this tied be tied to some um, some measurable um, goal, uh, some some way to judge whether or not this teacher is actually successful in the classroom, um, you know, with students, with actually teaching students. I don't want this just to, you know, a person who go, comes in and, and just you know, punches a clock with our with our children. I want them to be somebody who's truly dedicated to the wonderful profession of teaching um, young people. It's a it's an honorable profession, and we need to elevate that as much as possible. And if this could be an instrument in that um, in our quiver to elevate it, then I think we should. Logan, agree. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the first one I'll, I'll comment on you. I, I agree with you 100. percent um, that, you know, if this is just us helping them start this up and then they go on their own on the school district to fund it. I just do want to make sure that we're careful that they don't use reserve funds, which I don't know if they're allowed to, which what eventually came from us passing a budget or that the school board comes to us for more money that they would need just to fund this program because ultimately we'd just be still paying for it, whether it's through ARPA or another form. That'd still be us paying for it on the county level. Um, the other part is with Mr. Glover, I agree with him. I'm not here to, you know, pay for the doctorates or anything along those lines. But I also want to make you guys aware, um, you know, going to um, Lander University or Clemson, we're just talking to undergrad for 100K. We're not even talking about your master's or your doctorate getting you over 100K. Like, you will easily go over $100,000 if you put that fully on a loan by going to a private school, which South Carolina has quite a few of them. I just want to make sure that we're all up to date 
and aware of you know the contribution that it would take. Excellent. Thank you. You know, it might not be a bad idea uh, to have the school district come and make a presentation to us at some point on what that what that program looks like. I think that that would make us all feel a little better. <clears throat> I mean, it won't happen today, but I think that's something we can do in the future. Anybody else? Because I know uh, Heather has to move on. And so what, again, what I'm doing is I'm taking all the feedback, and then I'll reformat, I'll get with Jared, and we'll get with our partners, and we'll be able to come back. Thank you. Okay, so the next one is here for the county. It's the County Public Safety, Public Safety Recruitment and Relocation Package for $500,000. Our challenge currently is that Beaufort County is challenged in recruiting and relocating trained EMS and detention center personnel. Um, our goal is to shore up a sustainable workforce of trained EMS and detention center people. And our opportunity, <clears throat> we wanna create incentives for the human resources department to utilize uh, recruitment efforts through stipends, signing bonuses, and other incentives in order to hire and keep employees. So what we're looking at is for full-time employees hired to work in EMS or in the Beaver County T Detention Center are eligible for a $10,000 sign-on bonus paid over two years. The first payment would be $2,000, $2,000 allocated after training, followed by a $3,000 payment upon complete completion of probation, and then two $2,500 payments paid on the one-year and the two-year anniversary. A general stipend of $2,500 per employee would be available for relocation to be used at human resources discretion. And this program would be managed by Beaufort County. There would be no requirement to live in Beaufort County. And then again, sustainability on this program, if successful, could be found through local nonprofit organizations um, or perhaps the county itself. Um, and this falls into the economy chapter of the comprehensive plan, which again develops, is talk, talks about developing a highly skilled workforce. Thank you. Questions, comments? Hmm. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Brian? Anybody? Yeah. Yes, Brian. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm moderately happy about this one as well. I note that uh, the first year will be $7,500 and $2,500 the second year. That's uh, um, $2,000 signing bonus and uh, $3,000 probation bonus and $2,500 at first anniversary. That seems kind of um, a little uh, beginning end of the stick kind of uh, carrot in the stick thing. like. That's pretty close to the handle. Um, I'm thinking maybe I would prefer that this be spread out a little bit farther. Um, the second note thing I would note is that the um, the relocation bonus to Beaufort County um, that there is no requirement that they live in Beaufort County. I can understand not requiring our EMS um, and and uh, public safety um, people actually having to live in Beaufort County, but I don't like the idea of funding them to live in another county. I think that kind of, um, that that doesn't work. The mathematics just don't work for me. Um, question, is this gonna be administered by Phil? Phil's department? I guess it is. Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, it'll be uh, it would be administered by HR Phil, and also I want council okay. to be aware that we are in the process of scheduling a meeting with the sheriff as well. We were not. Uh, we know our shortages uh, and and our recruitment issues. Not necessarily always aware of what the uh, sheriff is facing, but apparently they're having difficulty in recruiting folks as well. So we would extend this program out to the sheriff's uh, office as well if they're interested in participating, and we could administer it on their behalf as well. So have a meeting coming on that up on that very shortly with the sheriff uh, representatives. The twenty-five hundred dollar relocation fee is for someone who lives in another county to come to Beaufort County. That's right. We're not funding someone to live. In another county. No, no, that would okay. be a recruitment tool. Okay. So if we wanted somebody from Charleston County that was, you know, trained high level EMS to come down to our county. Okay. So just one comment. This is a, a, another example of something that could quickly exceed the the cap. But I'll call the cap to five hundred thousand. So we have to have to be clear that whether it comes from 
the detention center, whether it comes from EMS, whether it comes from the sheriff, or, or a combination thereof, when the 500000 is gone, it's gone. That's right. So, I mean, I think that's all we're doing today is agreeing on what to do with ARPA funds, not future funds. Yeah, that's right. All we're doing, all we're doing today is as a commitment for how we're going to spend the ARPA money, the $37.5 million. We've already gotten our first uh, distribution. We're getting another one in two years. Some of these programs may be successful. I hope they are successful so that future councils or you all who are still on council can make a decision at the appropriate time down the road to say, hey, that worked very well. Let's continue to do this because we made a lot of improvements in our recruiting and retention of our employees. And when we all know that uh, recruiting and retention of employees right now doesn't just uh, – applied to the difficulty of that doesn't just apply to to county governments or anyone everybody's having trouble so whatever we can do we have a great opportunity to use this money wisely to help help uh, make great strides in that so uh, i i'd point out that you you need to work on the wording of the slide here because it says specifically after um the stipend for relocation there is no requirement to live in beaufort county you might want to reword that so it's not confusing and that HR isn't put in a position of um, approving um, erroneously somebody to move into Jasper County but work in Buford. Logan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just about to say exactly what Brian said. Um, maybe we just need to focus on the relocation and so people that actually not only work in Buford County but also live in Buford County as well. Um, that's a double incentive for us and them. Um, the other thing I would say is, have we talked to uh, municipalities about seeing if there's a way, and I don't know if there is, because I don't know the rules of the funds we got, to extend this to fire in Beaufort County because our EMS and fire do work hand in hand. I didn't know if that was possible or not. It might not be, but I just figured it'd be something to explore. That's a great point, Councilman Cunningham, and we have focused primarily on EMS and detention, but I'm happy to have those further conversations with fire. Paul, uh, one thing, yes, sir. Just uh, and this is kind of a general question, Heather. Yes. So we're going through these rights net right now. How are these going to come back to us? Because right now you're taking a lot of, you know, we're going down rabbit holes in each one of these things. Okay. Um, there's I, I count thirty of them. Yes. So, um, what? How is the the, the t decision process going to happen, or how does this come back to us that we can help some make this direction later on? Just so we're not. If you once you all uh, confirm that you like the plan today, then we will go out and actually uh, implement the legal documents and bring it back in the form so that you all will vote on it through committee, uh, through the appropriate committee and council structure. So outlined. each of these items will come back in the appropriate with all the details the that, we're, program, that we're talking yes. about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we're going to have to figure out when you put together the plan is if this is a very popular plan, it very well could be. That they could consume five hundred thousand dollars in a heartbeat, and then we're we're not going to get the other half for two years. So we may have to front that money for a period of as much as two years. So these are things going to have to be worked into the details. So go, sorry. Okay. I think yeah, go ahead for number three. Um, I do need to go back to Councilman Cunningham's comment because he said live and work in Beaver County, and we had talked about the teachers not being required to live in Beaver County. So I want to make sure I have clarity from y'all walking away is that everything that we're talking about moving forward is live and work in Beaver County. Is that is that what I'm hearing? I think so. Well, I, um, most of the Jasper well, County teachers live in Savannah. So I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. We ought to be careful about yeah. that one. Yeah. Okay. So I, if, I, if I might, Mr. Chairman, to clarify my remark, we were talking about the relocation um, to purchase a house, I understood. Um, so I, I think that if we... In, we entice somebody from Berkeley yeah. County to come down to teach in a Beaufort County school. If they live in Jasper County, that's okay with me. But I don't want to give them house uh, help finding a house unless that house is in Beaufort County. Understood. Does that make sense? Okay. Absolutely. And as far as loan payoff, um, you know, for student loans, I thought that the last measure that we talked about was just regarding student loan payoffs. And if they're working in a Beaufort County school, I kind of don't really care where they're living. I'd, I'd like them to live close. I'd like to like them to buy in my neighborhood. You know, I mean, we need more teachers. Yeah, um, so, um, yeah. Does that clarify it for you, Heather? Absolutely. 100% clarification. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, young yeah. lady. I appreciate uh, it. 
Oh. I will second that as well. Mine's just the relocation portion. Um, I, I didn't see that on the teacher portion. That's why I didn't bring it out for it. Um, right. uh, I, I, if the people that want to come here and work on our EMS and live in another um, county, that's fine. I just don't see how we pay for the relocation process for them in another county would be my only suggestion. Exactly. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next. Not be able to afford to live in this county. Right. All you're doing is paying them moving expenses. Right. So this one I'm really excited about. So this is the creation of a nursing pilot program through our school district. This is um, a seven hundred thousand dollar ask. And the challenge is the following. Beaufort County needs more CNAs. They also need more registered nurses and BSNs, especially given our aging population. And our goal is to graduate 500 CNAs from Beaufort County schools over the next 10 years. So this is the opportunity. Beaufort County in partnership with Beaufort Memorial Hospital, Technical College of the Lowcountry, and the Beaufort County School District will partner to offer a CNA designated track as an academy in schools both north of the Broad and south of the Broad. Beaufort County School District is willing to hire an academy coordinator. Beaufort Memorial Hospital will supply qualified staff as instructors to TCL's CNA program. And this is a model that they've used with TCL in the past. Some of the reasons why we're having such a nursing shortage in our area is because the qualified instructors are going out and they're nursing mm -hmm. and they're making a lot more money doing it. Beaufort Memorial is actually willing to step up and pay their nurses to teach the CNA and a CNA academy for our schools. <clears throat> academy students would have the opportunity to work at Beaufort Memorial Hospital or other healthcare facilities if they meet the age and the skill requirements. The students would have access to Beaufort Memorial Hospital for clinicals. Upon com project completion, students would be able to have a path to an RN or a BSN through Technical College of the Lowcountry or USCB. Um, continuing education could be paid for by employers. That's happening now. And this program will be managed by the Beaufort County School District. Sustainability could be found through local nursing nonprofit organizations. Jared and I were fortunate to meet with one. And then, of course, this also fits the economy chapter of the comprehensive plan. I would just ask, what happens to LPNs? They don't, we don't create LPNs anymore? So we are creating LPNs, and we are creating them in the schools, but the CNA accreditation is really what the hospitals are after. Okay. They need CNAs. Got it. Nurses' aides and LPNs, they need them too, but they really need CNAs. Got it. This sounds like a winner. Yeah. <laughs> no, no comments. Just anybody before we move no. on. No, I'm, I'm just surprised. Yes, seven hundred thousand is for. So the seven hundred thousand dollars would be you used to create the program and make sure that the Beaufort County School District is set up. Make sure that Beaufort gotcha. Memorial Hospital is paying their instructors fair wage. Um, you know, all gotcha. just the whole. Gotcha. Okay. But again, the sustainability in this comes from us getting approval here today and going to the school district. So this is almost like district. an initiation, getting them started, That's right. and they're going to take it over from there. That's right. That's well, well yes. spent. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. This is what I'm really passionate about, and Beaufort County School District is willing to do one north of the broad and south of the broad, which I was also passionate about. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could add my two cents. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I, I would... I would ask that we send this to county council with all speed. Uh, with really, this is this of all the things that I've seen. This is the one that really kind of lights my fire. I think this is again, like like York just said, seed money for something that will go on yeah. and sustain through COVID related. Oh, so you left bam, let's go. Let's go. I agree. I agree. Thank you. And I, and I do want to just talk a little bit more about the program. They would probably start in their junior year of high school and then finish their accreditation in their senior year. So we would be starting them a little bit early. It wouldn't just be senior year, go get your CNA credits. Anything you can do, let's, yeah. let's do it. Exactly. Let's roll. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, okay. Next up. 
regional housing trust fund. Um, this is one I think that we can all buy into for $1.2 million. Um, the objectives for the housing trust are laid out right there. And again, I did put a footnote at the bottom. The housing element of the comprehensive plan calls for the development of the regional affording housing trust. So I hope that we can. <laughs> Anybody? Comments? No. So no. explanatory? No. Right. This is also one you could accelerate, I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 This next one, we're looking for a executive recruiter here at the county. This would be somebody that would be hired and have a sustainable relationship with your county. Um, and this is to identify, hire, and maintain top talent. Um, they would be assisting in identifying passive candidates. They would be assisting in locating specialized candidates that fit the needs of government. Um, and they would understand the market needs. I have a question. Yep, go ahead. Um, Two hundred thousand um, dollars—that's way beyond the market for um, for a for one particular candidate, and you know, for one particular job opening. How many job openings do you intend, and why do we need to hire executive recruiters or executive people all that often? You know, uh, in other words, my question is, why is there a high turnover in our executive level so much so that we fund a recruiter that probably would hire 10 of them? We could we could find 10 executives using a recruiter for two hundred thousand dollars, maybe more. So what, what do you see? Right. So, so the purpose of this is to have this, these dollars in a fund. So when there is a need to attract top talent, we could work with somebody in the executive recruiting atmosphere that knows the county and has a long lasting relationship with the county. Okay. So you're thinking of this as a multi-year kind of Absolutely. engagement. Yeah, uh, Councilmember Fluano, it's a four-year commitment, and it would just be a pot of money that allows us to, in critical needs areas like right now, we have we have all of these grants out there to, to hire people uh, in our drug and alcohol uh, division or department. Uh, we may not be uh, employing the correct resources to reach folks that uh, across. Uh, uh, the region that work in those areas. Uh, Steve Donaldson and his team in our HR department are doing a great job. We just want to make sure that we're as effective in that marketing strategy as we can be to make sure that people understand Buford County, understand the advantages uh, of Buford County, and many times uh, having someone to call people up and talk to them directly about that. Uh, our staff doesn't have time to do that, but a recruiter can certainly reach out to folks and say, hey, uh, Buford County has this position. These are the good things about it, things like that. So that that's the purpose of yeah. this. So Sure. And, you know, if we're talking about drug and alcohol specifically, I think the, the one thing we can do to lure candidates to Buford County is to keep Steve Donaldson on the telephone. Yeah, right. yeah. And, you know, he would be the best advertisement for coming to work there because he's such a passionate, uh, committed kind of person. So and perfectly right for the job. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Last comments on count on executive recruiter. Logan. Chris. 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 Oh, Chris. Chris yeah, this, oh, I'm sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Thank you. So this is one of those things to me that doesn't feel as high impact as some of the other things that we've that we've heard of. Um, you know, especially like when we're talking about the CNA program, I mean, that's going to have a multiple a multiplier effect well beyond the seven hundred thousand dollars we invest i'm not sure that i feel the same way about this and the other thing about this too this feels like something that we could potentially budget for as opposed to using dollars that have very specific um use cases around them it feels like we could accomplish this just via our regular budget process if this is a need that's just my two cents thank you anybody else all right heather you're still up <laughs> So the next one is, again, something that we presented to you before. This is the Emergency Management Station Alerting. 
Um, and this is the fully integrated station, station alerting system that would make sure that calls are being routed to the right fire stations at the right times. It would reduce stress on the first responders. Um, and again, it keeps us compliant with recommended guidelines. So this is something that I encourage you to move forward on. So does council fully understand what's happening with that? Right now, the way the system's set up is if a call goes out to an EMS station or fire station, then that alert goes to all the stations in that district. So if it's three o'clock in the morning, the alert wakes up all the stations in that district and people have to get up and listen to see if they need to go out or not. So this would allow only the station that needs to respond to get the alert, the specific station. Wasn't this Questions, to, comments? Yes, sir. Your, wasn't this presented to us um, uh, at the yeah. budget time? Um, Chief Klein? I'm not sure. It might have been uh, Chief Klein might have presented as part of his budget, but we decided to wait until we did the ARPA presentation to, okay. to, okay. to fund it. Okay. 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 Yep. We're going. Don't they have a person awake and on duty all the time anyway? Doesn't matter. So, moving, questions. <laughs> moving forward, we um, are talking on this one about supporting local municipalities through the Good Neighbor Fund. And this was something that we came up with when we had the task force meetings that we had a lot of needs in the community um, and a lot of needs from our local municipalities. And so what we're proposing today is that $500,000 would be allocated to six different municipalities divided evenly among everybody for a total cost of $3 million. Municipalities would apply for the funds at Community Foundation of the Lowcountry under the guidelines and timelines of ARPA. So they would have to meet all of the guidelines and timelines that we're looking at in terms of 2024, the um, allocation and the spend being in 2026. This would be a one-time um, distribution of 500,000 once the um, requirements are met. Uh, municipalities would be able to apply um, either for one project or for multiple projects, up to them. And again, it would be administrated administered by Community Foundation of the Low Country. They've agreed to this? Community Foundation of the Low Country has. Questions? I just want to know, um, are you saying that Yamasee needs will compare to Bluffton needs? <clears throat> I'm just hiding. So we were, we were trying to be equal. In the comprehensive plan, there's a lot of talk about equity, and so we wanted to just divide evenly between everybody and whatever project they wanted to come forward with. Good. You can't base it on population or you know, I'm, I'm just, I just, I, I just can't. I mean, we we could. Yeah, uh, I would say I would love it. Yeah, we we could base it on population. In this particular case, you know, me and the funds, and we can we can try to tighten down on this a little bit because it was something that was brought to my attention after ARPA was out that uh, those, um, and I'm gonna get this backwards potentially, but I'm gonna, it has something to do, the distribution that each jurisdiction got on ARPA funds has something to do with them being an entitlement or a non-entitlement uh, community. And if they're one, they got less ARPA money than if there were another. So we can go back and refine that and look at that type of situation and try to do it proportionally based on that. But across the board, we wanted to be equal across the board to all the municipalities because in my mind, a smaller municipality might have more needs. They might have gotten less ARPA money uh, than the larger jurisdictions with more population to do less with it. So that's why we set it at, at, at uh, $500,000 a piece. Yeah, let me make a comment on that. I, the uh, the smaller ones do have greater needs. You're right. They have greater needs and they have less ability to raise revenue. And uh, if we reshuffle this deck, the amount of the difference, the delta that's going to go to a Hilton Head, say, or Bluffton, or uh, uh, is not going to be that significant. It's going to be. It means a lot to the little guy. It doesn't mean a lot. It's not going to mean that much to the big guy. That's so. right. Okay. Yes. It, it may lend itself to a per capita with a minimum that would address everybody's concerns. Take my guidance from you. Mm -hmm. Right now, leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. I'd like to leave it the way it is. Could It'll come back to us. Anybody else? I don't yeah. want to... Logan has his hand. Logan, sorry, go ahead, Logan. Yeah. 
Yeah, real quick, just sort of, since we're just brainstorming ideas here and ping ponging off one another, one of the things Chris brought up earlier is maybe the funds could be used for something else when he was talking about the recruitment process. Is this an opportunity for us to maybe look at some type of stipend or bonus for our fire the same way we did with EMS beforehand? Because we came about a year, a little less than a year ago, to do something for EMS. Is this an opportunity for us to do something for the municipalities with the fire district? I don't know, just something to think about if there's a way we can allocate some of those funds just like we did um, for our side on the county level. Well, this would give them the money and they use the money under ARPA guidelines for whatever they would want. So if they did want to do what you are asking for, they would have the funds to do that. They could propose programs of what they're going to use the funding for, and if we want to use it for recruitment or retention of the firefighters, then we could yeah. we could evaluate that and make the award based on that. Yeah. But at the top of your head, it looks like they probably could. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. If we can, they can. Okay. Right. Anybody else before we move, before Heather moves on? And, and then again, I want to go to bullet number three. You know, municipalities could apply for one project or they could apply for multiple projects. So if they wanted to use 250,000, as Chairman Passament just said, to recruit fire rescue, then they could do that. Okay. Okay, move on. Great. So next we get into the recreation element of your spreadsheet. And so what we're looking at for recreation and the St. Helena community is uh, 1.25 million. And this is to balance a unique way of life that only exists on St. Helena and creating a space where children can come together to play while preserving and promoting culture. Um, the funding would support design, planning, and potentially some construction of a right-sized small splash pad area and play space. And of course, the culture chapter of the comprehensive plan recommends reviewing recreation programs in St. Helena and ensuring that programs are addressing community needs and they, they are to expand the programming. Questions? Comments? I have one, I have one additional thing. I'm sorry, I keep no, no, no. Uh, jumping up here with Heather. We're trying to tag right. team it. But I do uh, understand that there may be some um, questions about whether or not this is going to play out the way we thought it would uh, for the community of St. Helena uh, Island and, and that area of the county. If the uh, if that area of the county did not want us to do this, of course, we could we could reallocate some of this money to something else or do a couple of other projects that qualify instead of doing this. So uh, Council Member Glover, I think you and I had a discussion about this the other day. I don't know if you have anything else you would like to add or not. Oh, no, I uh, I was just comment that um, the play area yeah. is is in uh, the splash pad maybe not, but the money should stay there. So I mean I don't want the money going mm -hmm. elsewhere other than on St. Helens. So. Absolutely. Right, Paul? And utilizing Paul. and revitalizing the three spaces that are there currently and seeing yeah. how that can be refreshed. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I had a comment. I was on the um, Southside Park Committee, and one of the things the public wanted was a splash pad, and uh, the committee decided due to costs, of maintenance, it, it was taken out. That was City of Beaufort, um, and they worked up some costs that they could probably give you for uh, maintaining a splash pad. It was, I was astounded. <laughs> it's it's real expensive. Uh, Any other hands you know, up there? Yeah, I had one yeah, uh, right. comment. You know, we used to have uh, water slides out on St. Ellen right. Island, yes. and we still own that property. I think that if we're going to do it, that might save us a little bit of money. Going there. Anybody else? All right, Heather. Okay, next slide. Thank you. And again, we're still in the recreation um, element. So with New Riverside Park. So this was a conceptual master plan that has been approved by both Beaufort County and Town of Bluffton. Um, and this is creating spaces for people in Beaufort County to play. Um, I love the New Riverside Park. I th just think it's a really great addition to our county. Um, and the request is one million to get this phase one going. Um, they've been stuck in kind of some funding issues there. Um, and the funding would go, to, go towards phase one of the conceptual master plan, which is listed on your website. And it includes bullets like park entrance and vehicular access, parking lots, trailheads and restrooms. Um, again, uh, hiking trails um, and um, walking trails. And again, this, this 
this park can be really, really special for Beaufort County. And it's going to be offering kayaking and primitive camping, hiking and biking trails, water views, and more. So this is something that I would like to see this infusion of money into. I don't, there's, there's no, no councilmen live over there, do they? That's going to be a, a blank spot when we, yeah, okay. Um, comments, questions? I can't see the folks that are online right now, so. <laughs> Any hands up online? No, okay. All right, Heather, move on. Okay, next slide. Okay, this next one, Burton Wells Water Park and Campground. This is a $1 million ask, and it's a revenue generating large scale recreational space. Um, this would be revenue, this would have revenue generating facilities similar to Greenville and Charleston counties. This would address multiple elements of recreation found in the comprehensive plan, including developing a strategy to address, address park needs by expanding on existing funding options and seeking new sources of funding and pursue facilities and active parks that generate revenue via usage fees. So the dream for this Burton Wells water park and campground would be a full scale water park. Um, again, we're talking about what you would see up in Charleston or Greenville, um, and it would also include a campground. Comments, questions? I can't see online. Anybody online with a hand up? Yeah, Paul. Gerald, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, when we talk about the, the camping uh, aspect of this, you're, you're talking about the small RVs. Uh, uh, are you talking about the full scale uh, camping? What, what are we talking about? What's listed in the master planning document is primitive camping. But again, I think that that would be up to the community and the county to see what it generates revenue. But this would be a revenue generating regional large scale park. Does anybody know how big that park is? I, it's pretty big, isn't it, Burton Wells? Yeah, yes. There's a lot of unused space out there, is there not? A lot of unused space. Yeah. Right, I thought, yeah, okay. Hundreds of acres. Did you want to come on up, Chuck? Talk about this? Mm. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Yeah, yeah. more she has to do. How much more? Chuck, there's a, all kind of potential out there, is there not? Oh, there's a tremendous yeah. amount of potential. Um, so the master plan, this is just a very small part of, of what's part of that master plan. Uh, the idea is to start putting infrastructure in that has already been mentioned, starts generating revenue. Uh, Burton Wells, 20 years ago, was sort of out of town. Now, if you look at all the houses, Habersham, all these places that are being built around uh, Burton Wells, it's sort of in the middle of everything. Uh, so it would draw south of the broad, the tourism south of the broad, north of the broad, um, and it, it would be right in the middle of the growth area. But it's hundreds of acres, and uh, there's there's a potential. Did the Marine Corps donate that to us? I don't think it was the Marine Corps. It was the federal did, government. Federal government. Yeah. Part of the well system. Uh, we have another piece of property over uh, near Port Royal that was a repeater station. So mm -hmm. all of those came about the same time in the 1960s. Yes, sir. When they closed Hope the well I, I think. Uh, before we go too much further on this, we need to evaluate the Marine Corps Air Station's um, comments, what they, what they would say about it, because um, this is clearly in the, in the flight, most of it's within the flight path and um, in the ACUS, and so we're, you know, kind of limited in what we want to expose people to. Uh, even, even, even before that, Brian, we would certainly have to... Uh, 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 have some community discussions as to whether the community is uh, whether this will set well with the community or not. This is the first time I'm hearing some of this, and so certainly it's going to it's going to require some community input. I think it's already in our master plan, so um, clearly we want to get that out and, and have a conversation with everybody, including the air station. Yeah. All right. Anybody else on the Burton Wells Water Park and Campground? Okay, Heather. Okay, next slide. Um, this one is the Reconstruction Era National Historic Parks Network of Signage Program. That's a mouthful. It's $350,000. And what the National Park Service is doing is they're putting up signage along I-95. This would have signage both with the Reconstruction Era sites as well as the network of sites, um, which includes you know a number of um, of, of different sites all across the county, Hilton Head all the way to Beaufort. And so the ask here is 
My only question is, is that enough money? It is. Yeah. Because <laughs> okay. yeah. you got Port Royal, St. Helena, downtown. Yeah. Yeah. So this project was scoped actually through the Lindsay through the appropriations process that we put in with the federal government to Senator okay. Graham, and it was not accepted, but we we had it scoped. Okay. Anybody else? Just one. Thing. Is, is this okay. number the three fifty? Is that net of a potential grant, or if we get a grant, that number is reduced? So the ask from Billy Kaiserling was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to put the signage into the network in the county. So it's still a question if we if they get a grant, they may not need as much. Um, that's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so, w when I was up here a couple of weeks ago, I talked about broadband at 500,000, Starlink beta test at 200,000, and electric vehicle county and community readiness at 1.2 million. What I'm asking today is for that to be just left as a placeholder. I do not have a project plan for this right now. There are way too many variables happening at the State House with the new infrastructure bill and then potentially with the Build Back Better. So, I just want to put a pause on this. Um, I know that there's things that we want in terms of electric vehicle community readiness. It's in your comprehensive plan. I see it. But as of right now, we just need to stick a pin in this until probably late January 2022. Comments, questions? Oh, Cheryl, just, are you scratching your head or do you have your hand up? He's scratching his head. It's holding okay. his head up. Okay. It's stretching his head. Okay. All right. Great. So now we go into the economic development um, tiers of the plan. And what we're looking at for the EDC is to um, fund $500,000 to the EDC to support the site, South Coast Cyber Building. This is actually building the physical infrastructure for South Coast Cyber. And it's us supporting that at half a million dollars. Mr. Chairman, I, I strongly endorse this. The, this group has gotten grants from the Department of Defense and they are ready ready to implement. So. Okay. Questions, comments? Okay, go ahead, Heather. Okay, next slide, sir. The next one is something that I'm really excited about as well. This is working with the Beaufort County Economic Development Corporation to fund $250,000 for the Gullah Farmers Cooperative. Um, I don't know if y'all have heard, I'm hoping that you did, that you know, the Beaufort County Economic Development Corporation won a national award for their work with the Gullah Farmers Cooperative. And the Gullah Farmers Cooperative has um, put $750,000 um, through grants, federal, state, and all sorts of other monies that they're finding. And this would be $250,000 of our ARPA funds to shore up this agricultural asset in Beaufort County. Comments, questions? Okay, go ahead. Um, this is a $50,000 ask. It's a very small ask, but Beaufort County EDC has identified a couple of different properties that they might want to look at in terms of land purchases. Um, and this is all areas that are identified under the Brookings Institute's understanding of how to use ARPA dollars to um, stimulate growth in underserved neighborhoods. So this is a $50,000 ask. Hmm. Comments, questions? Online, I can't see you. Speak out if you have a, your hand up. Okay? None? Go ahead. Thank you. So what we're looking at is um, community buildings in Gardner's Corner on St. Helena and also on Defusky at a million dollars a piece. And the challenge is the lack of neighborhood community meeting spaces where various partners, such as hospitals, recreation, whoever it is, um, can reach the needs of the residents or, um, or interact with residents. And so this could be an upgrade to existing buildings or it could actually be a new building built. Um, and so that's the ask for a million dollars for each of those communities for buildings. So questions, needed. comments? Okay. Very, very likely that uh, this will be a new build on the Fusky and possibly retrofits or expansions to existing buildings on St. Helen and Gardens Corner area, but uh, we'd have to work out some ownership issues with that. So Yes, yes you do. <laughs> And again, we're looking at these as flexible space, places where people can go and get their flu shot, um, places where people can do passive recreation, um, that sort of thing. 
right, go ahead. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> This is something I'm really excited about. Um, this would be a mental health telehealth program that we would fund with, in partnership with Beaufort Memorial Hospital to provide telehealth mental health resources for our detention center inmates. Um, we do not have a consistent source of mental health treatment for detention center inmates. We would be able to work with Beaufort County, or I'm sorry, with Beaufort Memorial Hospital to recruit a hospital psychiatrist that can treat inmates via telehealth for a predetermined period of time. Again, that would all be worked out in the MOU. And then that psychiatrist would also be able to allow our area residents to access a psychiatrist through the Beaufort Memorial Network of Providers. And you put that comment in there about potential funding for Beaufort County School Districts is available to serve student population. Let us know that that's already taken care of. Yeah, so okay. they are, they have the same issue that we have at the detention center and getting mental health resources to their students. They have a pot of money that they have set aside, and so they're looking at partnership with us on this if this is something that the county wants to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Questions? Comments? Yes, sir. Yeah. Logan. Oh, I'll, I'll um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just real quick, if this is successful, I'd like to see if there's a way we can uh, get this into our budget to continue something like this for our detention center. And more people out there. I think it's a bigger need than people realize. Um, not to get into all of the pandemic stuff. We all have our agreements, disagreements. But to me, one of the biggest things is the mental health aspect of people that went through um, this pandemic. Um, alcohol abuse is on the rise. Domestic abuse is on the rise. Suicide rate is on the rise. And I think that's the biggest issue we need to tackle right now in Beaver County is addressing those issues for our residents. So. Um, I see this being successful. Um, I want to see if this is the way that we can continue funding this project if it is successful the way it looks like it will be as well. Thank you. York next, and Brian. Yeah, um, I'm just thinking, um, and mental health is something that we do need to address. I, I don't know, I don't have the answer. Um, so I've been looking to people like the hospital um, but uh, you know, I, what raise what question comes to mind real quickly is um, where where is close to mental health and something like this here, um, and is one psychiatrist sufficient? Um, I mean, you know, but a million dollars is a million dollars, so you can probably initiate something, but it has to be an ongoing problem. I mean, an issue here because it's not going away. Um, you know, and working with the detention center, um, working with um, the hospitals. Um, so, a psychiatrist, uh, I wonder what coastal mental health is uh, in this process. Just, just, I just, you know, those are things that just come up. And I am, you know, I don't have, I'm, I don't know. So, I'm just wondering, we got resources, you know, instead of duplicating. Uh, or competing with, you know, how do we actually utilize all our resources as one? Because we're dealing with one community, and uh, so that's that's what comes to mind. So uh, that's why I, I I support it. I just want to know how we utilize all our resources that's out there, and how does all of this fit together? Sure. And Councilman Glover, I'd like to turn it over to Phil sure. Schmidt, who can answer the specific questions about crystal mental health because there's been some changes there. Okay. I appreciate your question because I think one of the important things when we're dealing with the detention center is our issue with mental health. Um, I don't think that enough resources gets put into mental health at the detention center uh, because we constantly are dealing with people that have mental health issues on a constant basis. And the problem is, is that they are in a vicious cycle of going through a lot of different agencies. One of them being Coastal Environmental Health, the other being the hospital, EMS, and us, and law enforcement. <coughs> so each one of those agencies are all interconnected. We all know these people very well that make it through our system, but I don't think are getting the comprehensive help that they truly need. And to get the program off like this, I think it's gonna take our partners like Buford Memorial, who runs two East, 
where a lot of people that go to the emergency room that have just left us go to the emergency room next. They end up at two E's, which is their minimum level kind of like mental health unit. And then once they get released from there, they go back out to the community, they end up back in law enforcement, and they end up back with us again. So it ends up into a vicious cycle. We are working with Coastal Empire Mental Health. Um, as you well know, we've had a contract with them for well over 20 years. And unfortunately, because of their own resources, they haven't been able to fill that contract. We are just recently, in the last couple of weeks, have just opened up our um, communications again with Coastal to try to bring them back into uh, the detention center and bring them back into the realm because lots of their patients are ones that end up with us and a lot of the new patients end up with Hebrew Memorial 2 East. So it's going to be a collaborative effort. That's a key word for me. And I'm, you know, and it, it's still open with Coastal. I mean, we, we have never shut our door at Coastal. Okay, so it's a collaborative with all of these partners you just mentioned, <clears throat> and what the hospitals will be taking the lead in this approach? Right. Okay. Because I think that, you know, just like you see many other places, like you can go to Publix now, and you get telehealth medicine inside the pharmacy right there. These are sort of the same issues where your resources are limited. I mean, everybody's having staffing issues. It, it's touched everybody. And the better way of dealing with these staffing issues is if we do have a psychiatrist and we're able to get to them a different way rather than having to take somebody to them or have them come all the way to us, which takes a lot of time out of their day, we can do it as telehealth. Then I think it saves a lot of time and effort and we can get a lot more people to those services quicker than trying to wait around to get an appointment three weeks from now. No, I agree with you, and I think that's why when you start looking at telemedicine, um, uh, broadband becomes a critical part of that because you got rural area that you can't even get access to the internet. So, um, you know, utilizing and servicing those areas, you know, is a complete package deal going forward. But um, um, as long as it's a collaborative effort and all the players are at least at the table, whether they want to participate or not, they're at the table because I agree that <clears throat> these clients are touching every last one of those agencies. Okay. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Hope Brian, you, you, had, uh, you had your hand up? Yeah, York nailed it exactly for me. Thanks, York. <laughs> all right, anybody else on the mental telehealth? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Next slide, please. So with this next slide, what I have done is just lumped everything under general infrastructure together. So we're looking at planning for a regional ferry service that we'll talk about in the next slide. $8 million for just general infrastructure, $3 million for water and sewer, and then $400,000 for a county IT data center. All right, next slide. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the regional ferry planning. This is $500,000. And the opportunity is to identify opportunities and incentives for improving and expanding marine access and transport services, for example, ferry service, to the residents of Beaufort County. And the $500,000 would be used for the study and planning of a countywide ferry service. Happy to answer any questions on this, or Jared, can you answer any questions? Okay. It's just planning, right? Just planning. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are our fund investments. And again, this is what I showed you all last month. We're looking at um, airport investment at $2 million, solid waste and recycling investment at $2 million, um, a county garage capital fund where we would be servicing our um, cars and our vehicles at $1 million, and then a general fund for Tefusky Island improvements at $300,000. And again, just like we've talked about, the community of Burton, uh, or the community of St. Helena, the um, Tefusky Island community would uh, choose what they want to do with $300,000. Mm -hmm. Any questions on these? 
Okay, next slide. And then last is staffing and consultants. Again, this is what was shown to you all um, last month. So you're looking at $125,000 for ARPA consulting. ARPA project management, which again is to have somebody manage these projects and make sure that everything is going smoothly, look for the next opportunity, look for ways to leverage funds alongside the consultant. Um, for the next four years, it's $520,000. And then uh, fiscal management is in your, um, this is a half of a person to be in your accounting office to be making sure that the reporting is done correctly. And that's $260,000. Okay. Questions? Comments? Uh, one comment from me. Yes. For the last two years, as we've developed our budgets, three words have come out, live, work, and play. And these ARPA funds directly deal with where people live, work, and play. Commend you for that. Yes, sir. Just um, make sure I understand the process going forward. Uh, I understand these these will come back to us in some form and detail for us to approve. Um, given the magnitude of the dollars um, and given that we're spending money, it sounds like appropriations. So are we looking at some kind of uh, an appropriation ordinance that will have three readings and public input? I would think so. Here we are. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, I would say um, some of these strike me as ones where we would be making a grant, more or less, to the school system. We want to understand it. The they can report back to us, the hospital, everything else. Uh, some of the other ones, uh, I hope we don't create parallel organizations and that we actually do it within the organizations, for example, um, what Jared's organization. Yeah, so. So we intend to take these uh, back to you guys. I think, and we haven't talked, but just thinking out loud here from today's meeting, uh, this seems like there's some that are right away easy, let's move forward. And then there's others that are, let's, let's um, do some edits from today's comments and, and come back and retool and bring them back. So um, we'll take a look at that internally with staff to see if it's, some of them are right hot and we can take them onto the council right away. Uh, even potentially next week in, in December. Um, and then other ones, whether we bring them in January or thereafter. Um, and then whether we break it in two ordinance or one ordinance or, or whatever, we'll work that out as far as staff. So our timelines to get started on these, uh, we do have to appropriate them all by 2024, which I have no fear of that, and then fully expend by 2026. So even when we have these grant opportunities, once we say we have a partner, say with Community Foundation or Low Country or whoever that may be, once we expend that from our, that counts as our expenditure. So we meet that guidelines, um, even if it takes two years, four years to expend it. Um, also, um, oh man, where was I going? Anyways, we talked a lot. So yes, you guys, you guys I appreciate y'all, all the practice y'all have done sitting in those chairs. Y'all are, we, we, uh, we good to use today. So thank you for listening to us and for uh, acting. Before, before you leave, and before I had to go back to the drawing board and rewrites a lot of things I don't think are necessary to rewrite, um, I want to just circle back to the good work you did on retention and recruitment. Eric, are Buford County employees required to live in Buford County? They, they are not. Thank you. So then, living where you work is really not anything we can force anyone to do. Uh, that has gone away right after prehistoric times. So uh, telling people that they must live where they work is over decades ago, and no one's doing that anymore. So I don't think we can impose that on anybody. And I don't want you to go back and create a universe where you tell people you have to live here. With relocation expenses, $2,500 will rent you a U-Haul trailer that you can fill up and drive down here. No one's doing closing costs on, on houses. No one's paying rental fees. It's really helping people come here with a limitation on the amount we're going to give them. So these relocation fees are not going to help people rent an apartment. It's not going to help them buy a house. It's simply going to allow them perhaps to move their furniture here from another place where they won't have to um, pay that themselves. So we made a lot of noise about all this, but I, I don't want you to go back and think you have to have a do-over because you were right on the things you were saying. So uh, I hope that that uh, comment 
will help guide you somewhat with to not, not spend a lot of time doing something that you did correctly the first time. Okay, thanks. Yeah, one, one last question. If, if I, I could respond, if you want my vote, you'll change it, but it's just one vote. Thank you. Uh, Stu, you had well, well, two things. Uh, I, I think on that particular issue, it seems to me most of these issues don't relate to where people live. It, it, I, I tend to think, though, in the case of the school, t school teachers and the first responders, if we're actually paying them money, that there is an argument that they ought to live in, in Beaufort County because the reason we have a problem is because of our high cost of living. So if we're solving that problem, why shouldn't they live here? Um, but the more important question for me at this point, there's we don't get the other half of the funds for two years, right? Well, it's actually, so we got the first half in May. We get the second half next May. So um, next May, we'll okay. So it's sitting in the bank, ready to. Expand. Okay, so we can look at the whole thirty-seven million. Six months we'll have the, the next six. Okay, and I noticed there was a, an, an option two there. I, I assume we're going to focus on option one. That's correct. Okay, yes. thank you. By the time by the time we move forward with these projects, uh, we're going to have a hard time spending eighteen million dollars in six months. I'd really like to, um, but um, I'm not sure we'll get. Quite well, I do like the idea of bringing them. A forward piecemeal, uh, as you have them in some logical yeah, groupings. That we know we can accelerate and go yeah. Yes. yeah, like if you got three for the school district, put them together. Yeah, I think that's essential for you to take the look look at ones that we can do right away. And, and for my take on this, one of the essential ones was the last one you talked about, and that's the uh, third party vendors, the ARPA consulting, the managers because that's critical for them to be able to be on board as we begin to put the money together. Absolutely. So that we, we fill out the right paperwork, we met, meet the timelines, and they can help us with some of the others. And we take advantage of the money that's available at the state and federal level. Yep. yep. Again, thank you for all the time and attention. Sorry for so much, but it was important. I appreciate all the time. Thank you, very thank you, thank you, Jared. Thank you, Heather, for all your work. I know you worked very hard on this. Thank you. Yeah. A lot. Thank you. And you gave us good direction and guidance and leadership. Thank you yep. for that. <clears throat> We're ready for uh, item number nine. We are ready for item number nine. Uh, just a couple of things before I turn it over to Dan. Uh, one, as we're right at four o'clock, we've got to do this agenda and we've got to do natural resources. And then we have a planning commission meeting starting in here at six. So just keep that in mind as you uh, go through the uh, rest of the, your respective agendas there, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chairman, <laughs> chairperson. So uh, anyway, um, so you all have reviewed alternative one and two. We have public meetings. Um, I think Dan Morgan has addressed the comments, uh, has an alternative three that he has presented to the, and we put out to the community toward the end of last week. I'm going to let Dan come out, come up now and talk you through all of that, uh, where we are, where we need to go. Uh, we do need you all to do everything in your power to make a recommendation to full council today uh, in some form so that we can give this first reading on December 13th. That's not my timeline. That's the timeline that we're underneath by the state uh, because we had to be finished in February in order to get things done uh, for precincts redrawing and get uh, things out through the voter through the voter registration office uh, for the filing period in March. So, uh, Dan, I'm going to turn it over to you and Ian and let you come up and do what you've uh, done so very well throughout this process. Yeah. <laughs> so as, as Mr. Greenway has mentioned, we have uh, worked in the last week from those public meetings we had, from the comments and feedback that we received, and came up with two maps, an alternative map 3A and a 3B. I'm going to discuss those with you right now. So the first slide, um, thank you, Sarah, is alternative map 3A. And alternative map 3A, 3A and 3B have minimal adjustments that I'll share with you that are the same on both. One of them is in the Okatee Burton area or in the Burton area and the second is in the Okatee area. As we get closer I'll talk about those specifically. 3B and 3A also the significant changes are there are on Hilton Head on, on the island itself where we address the Gullah Geechee communities uh, in that area. So next slide. So here is the Gullah 
Geechee comparison. You had it perfect right Can we there. get that on the screen, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right now. Yep. And, you know, that wasn't publicly available. Dan, why, why don't I have a, a copy of this? It was discussing. It's coming out, I believe, right after this meeting, right as soon as we're done, you'll see those maps available. So the maps were given, uh, the two, 3A and 3B were given to Mr. McKellen and Mr. Uh, Rodman to talk to the, the Gullah Geechee community at that time. And so this area that we, we talk about with three alternate 3A, 3A has 12 of the Gullah Geechee communities all in District 10. One is in District 11, that's the Chaplain area. Oh, it's... Coming up, okay. And then one of them is in uh, District 11, that's a chaplain community. And then one of them is shared between the two districts, which is a Spanish Wells community. That is alternative 3A. Alternative 3B, uh, the request came to try to, to keep these districts kind of equalized, if you can, in the communities, uh, in the Gold Geechee community. So we, we did that as we researched and tried to put that data together. That provided us with, in District 10, nine of the communities, two fully in District 11, and then three shared among the two districts together. That is the major significant difference in Alternative 3A and Alternative 3B. In the Okatee area, we addressed uh, the, the concerns regarding Simmonsville Road and, um, and Buck Island Road in that area. Uh, it moved from uh, District 9 to 8. We were able to review the Do data. Do we have that the on the map, please? We Do sure we will. have that for all of us to see? That's number four. Should be slide four. This one, right? The other. The other. <laughs> the next. So that's three. That, that area, okay. You can see all of them here. So this is the, the Okatee area, as you can see down in the Okatee Bluffton area. That is looking at the Buck Island Simmonsville area that moves back into District 9 and also the Old Miller Road area and Stony Creek area. There's two blocks there that were moved that are currently in, a, uh, in District 9 and they are moved back into District 9 there. The Okatee, you can see the Oak, or I mean, excuse me, the Burton area changes there. Uh, it was a request for a couple small uh, blocks in the District 1 up in the Rug Rack Road Morrell drive area, those were moved into District 1. And in District 5, it moves just one block on to Baynard Road is where it is in <coughs> District 5. So it's just a marsh area right there. Yeah. Okay. Those were the, we the changes. Close, up, close yeah. up on that. Yes, that would be. <coughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Going from District 5 to 1 was the Rug Rack Morale Drive area. And the, the smaller one there, just south of Highway 170, is a Baynard Park. <coughs> so that question it goes, to, it goes right to Baynard Road. Baynard Road. Yeah. North. Uh, Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just north of Baynard Road. Right. So those are the, the changes that we have made to Alternative 2 map to come up with Alternative 3A and Alternative 3B. The deviations in Alternative 3A is 1.97, so it keeps us well under the 5% per, uh, percent deviation that was requested by council. How and much? in alternative 3B, what's that? I'm sorry. What was the deviation? 1.97. Five. okay. And for alternative 3B, it does go up a bit. It goes up to 3.46 deviation with that, that map. So with that, I can take any questions or, or discussion. Well, I was just making a comment. I think you did a very nice job on, on this, and it was hard work, and it was uh, in a very condensed period of time. So my thanks to you and to Ian for uh, working that through the weekend, essentially, and uh, and producing it. So thanks very much. You're welcome. It was not it, only Ian and myself. There was a, the other mapping team. Yeah, I just don't have the names. Get them in there, yeah. <laughs> Barry Reed was our, our production guy who got the boards together for us, and Laura Busher also met with us with yeah. making sure that we met as we met with you and the council members. Hey, Logan had a comment next. Logan, yeah, yeah. Just just one quick question to make sure I understand. First thing, like when I talked the other day, I think you guys did a fantastic job on this. If we could go back to the other slide that showed all of Beaufort County with the changes circled, real quick, that would be helpful. 
Um, yes. Perfect. Thank you. Right over there by District 7 and 9. The question is, is that adding or subtracting it from 7 and putting it in 9? Okay, I'm looking at, particularly at the larger circle, um, Stonesville and Buck Island. I, I might have missed that part. The other one right, right, yep, oh, right there. Yep, perfect, right there. So that one is taking blocks from District 8 and putting them into District 9. Oh, and putting it into nine. So it Correct. actually it has nothing to do with seven. You removed nothing. it from. Correct. But the, but it originally was in seven, then it got moved to eight, and now moving it to nine. Yeah. Correct? So currently it's okay. in seven. And, what, and yeah. when, as we created the maps based on the 2020 census data, we moved that in <coughs> two into district eight. Okay. And now it's Thank in you. nine for this. I understand. I was just trying to piece that together. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Because we're going to have to Chris ask Chris has his hand up. Chris has his hand up. Thank you. Uh, oh, just Chris, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Just real quick, I wanted to echo what Larry said. And you guys have a really, really hard job. I think you did um, just some really great work here. Uh, obviously, I'd like to dig into the map, so I may have some more questions. But um, And you don't have to answer this right now because I know I'm putting you on the spot. But I'd be curious how many um, school, school board members are in the same districts as previous. One of the reasons why I asked is because it seems like the school board member from District 8 under this revision will still be in, in District 8. And that's one of the things we talked about is making sure that there's continuity between all the elected officials. So that, that will be a question, but you don't have to answer it now. Okay, we can get we can provide that data and you are correct. Uh, District 8 school board member stays in District 8 with this alternate. Hey, hey, Dan, this is Joe. Yes, um, yes sir. Just just want to thank you, Ian, and your staff for the assistance you gave in making the two changes up in District One. I'm 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 pleased with what we got. You're welcome, sir. Anybody else? We're gonna need a motion. Um, be happy to make the motion that we um, adopt um, Scenario Three A and send that to County Council for approval. Yes. That the, I thought they preferred 3B, Larry. No, they changed it to 3A this morning. Oh, did they? Okay, whatever they want, fine with me. Okay, well, somebody's on top of it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, we have a motion to adopt the recommendation of staff, including option 3A. Second. Second. Discussion? And the motion is to move it to County Council. Hearing none. Without exception, we will adopt the resolution or the motion to move it to County Council. Yeah, for first reading. For first reading. Oh, sorry. So we'll have three, three public reading and public hearing. We will have three um, readings of the ordinance. All right. That brings us to items 10 and 11. Can we do those together? Yes, sir. So I'm going to go... Pamela Cobb with Disaster Recovery. I'm going to go a little out of order so it makes a little bit more sense. Um, starting with item 11, both of these items are um, requesting a resolution to be passed. Uh, the first one, a resolution supporting federal flood mitigation assistance reimbursable through grant programs. Beaufort County recognizes the need to assist Beaufort County residents with the opportunity for mitigation programs through federal and state programs that will assist in mitigation mitigating repetitive lost properties in unincorporated Beaufort County. Uh, the mitigation grant programs are provided to authorized applicants to assist in the elevation of a residence located in the jurisdiction of unincorporated Beaufort County to reduce or eliminate the risk of repetitive flood damage to buildings and structures under the National <coughs> Flood Insurance. Beaufort County desires to promote citizens' participation by creating a flood mitigation assistance program and permitting grant funds to be reimbursed through this program. Uh, the funding source for this program will need to come from the general fund. Uh, this program requires $750,000 to be available in order to initially cover the cost for citizens projects, whereby the cost of the project will be ultimately reimbursed by the state or uh, federal, federal or state entity. Any questions? But I can, can we use answer. the language in 11 and 10 to make the uh, the resolution, the motion for resolution, or do we need detailed language beyond that? So one, so the language in 10 actually goes through uh, the assistance policy, the flood mitigation assistance policy. Uh, the one for 11 uh, gives approval for each one of the homeowners that we are going to approve a grant program. 
So it allows them to apply. Sounds like we need some additional language for 11. I mean, uh, number, we're at number 10. So we can take, make a, we can make a motion that says a resolution, a resolution to adopt the Beaufort County Flood Mitigation Assistance Policy. Correct. Correct. Okay. Under so I need a motion. I need a motion for that. So move. Okay, I need a second. Second. Okay. Discussion. Just quickly. Yes, sir. Help me um, understand um, um, the language that's in here when it talks about fee simple ownership. Um, as relates to his property and mobile homes. Are they oh, I may have to refer to Chuck Atkinson if he's still there. Essentially, what these programs are helping uh, citizens be able to have a cost share where the, the county is the applicant and we're building them up to uh, flood elevation, base flood elevation and above so that they reduce the risk of continuing to have to do uh, flood insurance claims, which ultimately will reduce the flood insurance uh, insurance cost. Thank you. Right. So it would be for any residential property that is currently not compliant. They have repetitive losses. They can apply for this program. FEMA will give them money to bring it into compliance and elevate it so that they no longer have repetitive losses. It is the county is not paying the money, the county is a pass-through. So what, what happens, the we, how do I explain this? The, the applicant applies, we are their partner in the application in very loose terms. The state depends on the county to administer their program and FEMA's program. So they will build the property, they will have all of their receipts, they submit it to the county, we submit it to the state for approval. Then once it's approved, then we pay the applicant and then we get reimbursed from the state. I got all that now. Right, and it would apply to any residential, if it's a mobile home, it's a mobile home, if it's a house, it's a house. That's all I need yeah, now. it's, but that's sort of the, the round robin of the that's whole thing, fine. any residential property, if it meets all the criteria, it can apply for the grant. On his, property. Add On his property. So anyone who has the ability <clears throat> to build or has the right to build on his property, now we would have to have a sidebar conversation about what that means, right? If they are listed on the deed, if they are through probate given uh, the right to build on his property. Yeah, so no, no. so I, you, know, it, you would have to have a legal right to build on it in order to um, no, yeah, no, to no, for the right, grant. right. The building part is is you got to have with the um, refinancing it. Uh, the bank's going to want to clear title. I got that part. Now. Exactly. I don't, I'm not dealing with that. Uh, I'm dealing with folks who uh, need to elevate their property, their mobile home, on their property. They own the mobile home, or they're financing the mobile home, but the property itself, the physical, the real estate is not theirs. But the mobile home is there. Are they eligible for this assistant? That's all I've asked. So, so that's and, why I said we we'll probably have to get into the weeds because if they have the mobile home there and they own the mobile home, mm -hmm. then they would have had a right to put it there. Yeah. Okay. So that would be determined by whether they are a distant family member who does not so, have it or they are leasing it long term. If they're a leaser of the property, probably not. But if they have ownership of that uh, heirs property, then I would say yes but there are a hundred caveats with their property. And again, it's a federal program. It's a state DNR and FEMA uh, grant program. So the county wouldn't have control over that anyway. They're actually applying to the federal government through uh, state DNR in Beaver County. But I can research it. I can yeah, please do. It's a good yeah, question. Because it also says in here that um, um, as long as the administrator who's administering it uh, approves it and stuff, um, you know, you can go along with it. Right, so, and that would be safe. So there's a lot of power in the administrator and stuff. Right, so, okay. Sure, we'll, we'll talk about it. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate Thanks. it. Any other questions? Yeah, just regarding the, the seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, I don't have anyone else from, from, from finance staff here. So Whitney and, and Eric, how how would we handle that? <clears throat> That's something that obviously to have that money set aside and readily available in the general fund, or, or what do we need to do once we approve this? I would recommend reserving a portion of fund balance for this purpose. And you can do that based on um, either surplus from our prior year or we could do a budget amendment in the current year, but you would want to budgetarily 
either budget for it a year or either reserve a portion of your fund balance moving forward for this purpose so that you always have funding to draw upon in this situation because we have to front the cash. Okay, thank you. All right, we have a resolution to adopt the Beaufort County Flood Mitigation Assistance Policy. We have a second. We're in discussion. Any further comments? Hearing none, call the question. Can I do this without exception? Any exceptions? All right, that resolution will be approved without exception on 10, 11. Do we need specific language here? I think we do. Or can we just simply say a resolution supporting federal flood mitigation assistance reimbursable grant programs? Uh, you can, you can, um, yeah, there is a resolution. You can make, all you're doing today is making a recommendation. Uh, so using that function. language? Yeah, you can use okay. that language. Can I, have a res can I have a motion, please, for that resolution? I'll so moved. Motion, Chairman. Second. All right. Uh, discussion? All uh, right. Hearing none, uh, without exception, we'll approve item number 11. Are there any exceptions? Hearing none, 11 is approved without exception. 12. Uh, discussing re regarding rules and procedures. This is going to be very quick. Uh, you, you just received an update on that. Uh, there have been uh, some opportunities already to catch some things were wrong. I know Brian picked up on uh, something that I missed, which was uh, takes a simple majority to overrule the chair on a challenge, things like that. That's been corrected. Other things have been corrected. Take a look at it at your leisure. It's going to keep coming up. You have plenty of time to look it over. Don't have to look it over right now, obviously. And uh, as, as we meet, bring forward. If you see anything that, that troubles you, just bring it forward. Um, item 13, uh, request for purchase of cat motor grader. Who's going to make that? Yeah. So this is a request to purchase the motor grader. This came up, it wasn't in the budget, uh, but it came up as an added item. This is to help. We have five motor graders right now, um, one in Defusky, one in Bluffton, and three north of the Broad. This would be an added motor grader um, to help us increase our frequency of blading the roads, specifically in the north of the Broad. Um, this would help us right now. We're kind of on a nine to 12 month schedule. Uh, we nine to 12 weeks <coughs> this would help us get down to hopefully a six or eight week schedule um so this would be a resolution to award uh for or purchase a motor grader up to one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars with cat their own state contract and we've got a proposal included in your packet and would be paid out of arpa funds out of our infrastructure arpa yes mm -hmm. okay so we need a motion to oh, oh, authorize up to $195,000 for a motor grader to be paid out of ARPA funds. A motion? Sorry, Brian I made, made the motion. Move, sir. Okay, thank I'll you. I'll second it. You're a second? I'll second it. Thank you. All right, without exception, we'll approve that. Are there any exceptions? Hearing none, that just matter one, is approved. One motor grader? Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> one day we want to pay them so we don't need the motor graders. But yeah, let, me, let me respond. You and I had that discussion. Uh, so I talked to Neil. Neil may want to elaborate a little bit. Paul Neil, he said if we bought the one motor grader, he could use that to divide up to take care of both of your Thank district you. issues and the council member Dawson's issues. We're getting a lot of complaints about the length of time that it takes us to rotate pay, uh, grading roads. So this additional motor grader will allow us to close that gap. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, items 14 and 15 are appointments to the Beaufort Memorial Hospital Board of Trustees. There are two for two separate slots. Uh, this process is going to be changed at some point, but it hasn't been changed yet. So I'll ask for a motion to, for, to approve Carolyn Banner, Ph.D., and Angela D. Simmons, Ph.D., to the Beaufort Memorial Hospital Board. I'll make the motion, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I have a second. I think Gerald got oh, it. Gerald, th okay, thank you. Can I, get, can I have a question? Sir? Yep. Thanks. What's the status of the lawsuit where Buford Memorial is suing us for um, for uh, placement of uh, um, a board member? Uh, the lawsuit has been dismissed, and we're still working with Buford Memorial on revamping the ordinance that you all had uh, uh, reviewed some time ago. Uh, we're waiting on our legal counsel to uh, work with their legal counsel to resolve the amendment differences and to bring a proposal back to you all. And we're pressing for that to be done in January. We were hopeful that it would have been done in November or December, but due to a trial of the BMH attorneys, uh, they were not able to uh, work with us on that as quickly as possible. Thanks. When would we be voting on this, Mr. Chairman? When would we be voting on what, Brian? Appointments. This at council? Yes. This at council? Yes. Because quite frankly, right now, I'm not inclined until we 
at some movement towards the amendment of our ordinance that we're that we're talking about I, I don't feel really any particular rush to get this done well the issue is uh, that we don't we haven't approved the new ordinance for reasons that have just been explained by the administrator and uh, there, there are vacancies on the board so I guess the question really is uh, and, and of course the board would like to the trustees would like to have a full board uh, do we do we move these forward or do we wait until we get a new system in place that may happen in January it may not that's the question exactly it's Jim, I, uh, go ahead and Brian, thank you both what's that yeah, Brian um, um, I, I understand I hear you and um, I think the resolution is some at some point in time was going to get resolved but um, I would love for at least one of these applicants to move forward I think she would do a good job representing um, the community on the hospital board so which, which one do say. you like or which one do you like <laughs> don't don't answer that sir. don't answer that yeah, thank thank you. You. I, I say go ahead and take your vote mr. chairman all right well we have a motion a second to move forward uh, Carolyn Banner PhD and Angela Simmons PhD um, I'll call the question all in favor I, well, let, me, let me do it the other way I, I, I would suggest you could do it without uh, without objection sir uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not intending to vote no on okay without exception fair enough without exception <clears throat> we'll move Carolyn Banner and Angela Simmons forward to the Memorial Hospital Board are there any exceptions hearing none their appointments are approved one question uh, Paul, Paul. Thank you. one question for Eric me me oh you do okay go ahead hey, yeah. Eric was, was the lawsuit dismissed or withdrawn because I was thinking it was withdrawn but I may not remember that correctly I, I have to, okay I have to Tom Cavney I, I, I was told it was dismissed but I, I don't know the difference between dismissed and withdrawn they sound similar to me but it, go ahead Tom <laughs> The plaintiffs with uh, it was withdrawn slash dismissed. I mean, I haven't gone back to see if it was a consent order or if it was 40 jade, but it is it is no longer pending. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the only thing left is a, an executive session, and I don't know that we have time to do the executive session. Is that time sensitive? Uh, yeah. so, I can quickly tell you in a nutshell what's happening. Uh, many of you all received a letter. Uh, from Mr. Reed Delaney uh, on a proposal for him to relocate Prospect Road. We do not, as a staff, support any proposal to allow the um, about. relocation of Prospect Road or the abandonment of our right to that road by the county. So unless you all tell us otherwise, we're going to proceed on with Mr. Chris Murphy going through the process of condemning the right of way. Mm -hmm. Any comments? I could, if, if I could, Eric, let me just remind council that in February of 2020, it passed through, it adopted a resolution, asked the county to take whatever to establish Prospect Road as a public thoroughfare. That is what we are doing and have been doing for the last 18 months. Um, the mm -hmm. lawsuits, lawsuits were recently filed against property owners, owners who own property along Prospect Road mm -hmm. to doing your council has asked us to do. You guys got some letters about all that recently. All we wanted to do was to give you an opportunity, was to bring you up to date on what we're doing, which is that we are moving forward, and to answer any questions that you have about it because it's pending litigation. We believe it's best to put it into an executive session. There's no urgency to it. We could do it again um, at the next executive committee meeting or council meeting if you'd like to keep us to it at all. Okay. Well, I support staff, but I'm only one of 11, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I support the staff. I agree. Right. Okay. okay. We'll continue on. The, we have one additional executive session item that can wait until January, and that is the discussion of a t fiscal autonomy for the school, school district. district. Yeah. Yeah. Stu just pointed that out. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I question why, why that has to be an executive, an executive session. Yeah. You want I question why that has to be an executive session. Bingo. <laughs> Pardon me? Because there's several there's several legal options to you all that we felt that you all may not want to uh, have on the record in open session you can you can do it legally in executive session 
But if you do not want to do an executive session, then that's up to the body as a whole as to whether or not you do it in executive session or open session. I'd be in favor of doing an open session, but I'm just 111. All right. Well, in any event, it's going to be in January. That's correct. Open, you know, There's no time sense to issue that. All right. Um, we need we're to, I need to know how much break time we need. We're done. Five yeah. minutes. Okay. <laughs> we'll be re-adjourning. We'll be Adjourn. We're adjourned. Adjourn us. We're adjourned. Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said we're done, but all right. Well,